Hi, my name is Stephen Starnes, so uh, we should all be in Chemistry 1311, right? General Chemistry 1. Uh, so I just wanted to give a little introductory video so that you could learn a little bit more about who I am and about this class. Uh, so I came to Texas A&M Commerce in 2005, so I've been here about 15 years now. Uh, so I generally teach General Chemistry 1, General Chemistry 2, so Chem 1311, 1312, um, Organic Chemistry 1 and Organic Chemistry 2, so I am an organic chemist, that's what I have my PhD in. Um, and then I teach graduate courses in organic chemistry, would typically be what I teach here. Um, okay, so my goals for this course. Uh, so I genuinely want every single one of you to succeed in this course. So what does that mean? Um, to succeed, that just doesn't mean getting a good grade. Um, what I genu genuinely want everyone to do is to learn chemistry and to learn a lot of chemistry. Um, so I want you to better understand how chemistry applies to your everyday life so that this is not just a course that you have to take to check off something on your degree, uh, but that when you leave this course that you can understand the importance of chemistry. Um, and then hopefully it could help some of you realize that maybe you should be a chemistry major. Uh, maybe you're good at it. Maybe you, you'll find that you enjoy chemistry and maybe you'll see that you see the relevance of it uh, to everyday life and to maybe your career goals. Uh, because you, there are many students that do take chemistry uh, degree and go on to medical school or dental school or pharmacy school. Um, even some former students went on into nursing. Um, or maybe you find that you want to work in a pharmaceutical company and be the one helping develop in the new medicines for people. Or it could be for animals. Many of you are animal science majors and maybe you would find that you would enjoy working in a pharmaceutical industry trying to develop new medicines for animals. Uh, many of you are environmental, um, have environmental interest. Maybe you'd want to go into environmental chemistry. Right? Um, many of you are engineering majors. Maybe you want to go into chemical engineering. So if you had a um, bachelor's in chemistry or a lot of chemistry courses, you could go on to a graduate program in chemical engineering, for example. So you don't have to just become a chemist. You can take a chemistry degree into many other um, areas. So but hopefully you'll enjoy this course and learn a lot of chemistry. Um, so, you're right, there's no need to fear chemistry. Chemistry is really, it's a difficult subject. Students it's generally tell me it's one of their most difficult sub subjects, but they also tell me that it's one of the subjects that's, that they enjoy the most because they know that they've been challenged and that they know that they have learned a lot by the end of this class. Um, so no need to fear this class. If you apply yourself and work hard in this class, um, you can succeed in this class, but it does take effort. You cannot just watch videos and take tests and know that you're going to be okay. You have to actually work hard in this class to succeed in it. So you have to be, to do good in chemistry, you have to basically be a good, good problem solver. You have to know how to set a problem up and how to solve it. Um, you have to have decent math skills. Not all chemistry courses require math, but uh, this course requires some math. It's not difficult math, right? You don't need any calculus for this class. You just have to have good problem solving skills, basically some basic algebra skills. <clears throat> and of course, there is some memorization, so you gotta be able to mem remember material as well. Um, some courses in chemistry require more memorization than others. Organic chemistry, why it's a difficult class for a lot of students is because there's a tremendous amount of material to learn. The material itself is not difficult, there's just a lot to remember. Uh, but in this class, it's basically what's gonna help you in this class is um, good problem solving skills. Okay, so just quickly, so how can you succeed in chemistry? Uh, and this probably pretty much applies to any science course in general, but specifically really for chemistry. So we'll just go through a, a top 10 list, things that you can do, in my opinion, to succeed in this course. Um, you can study on a consistent basis, right? So you do not want to procrastinate in this class. You want to stay up, stay, um, stay on track with me as I cover chapters, um, or well, it's laid out in the syllabus, right? The general schedule. So the first week of class is chapter one. At the end of the first week of class, hopefully you have studied chapter one and you understand that material. Uh, because what you'll find in chemistry is that the material constantly builds on itself. If you don't understand chapter one, you got problems in chapter two. If you don't understand chapter one and chapter two, 
and we get to chapter three, uh, you have no clue what we're doing and you should just drop the class at that point, right? So chemistry is one of these subjects where you have to study on a consistent basis in order to, the, the old material is gonna be needed to understand the new material. <clears throat> So the upside to that is that once you learn the previous chapters, <clears throat> by the time you get to the end of the course, the, the initial chapters are easy because you had to understand all of those chapters to understand the later chapters. <clears throat> um, you can form a study group. I know this is difficult in an online environment, uh, but maybe if you're living on campus and you know other students taking general chemistry that you could get into a study group of three or four with them. So the benefit to that <clears throat> is that if you understand something and you teach it to somebody else who doesn't understand something, then you will solidify your knowledge and understand the material on a much deeper level. And so some of, for some of you, this is important. If you're a chemistry major, obviously that's important to solidify your knowledge. But for some of you want to go into medical school, for example, and if you want to take the MCAT, well, guess what's on the MCAT, the entrance exam, the medical school? General Chemistry 1 is on that exam. So if you learn the material now really well and you solidify your knowledge, uh, then when it comes time to take the MCAT, uh, it'll be much easier to, for you to prepare for that exam. Uh, and obviously, if you don't understand the material, then the benefit to be in a study group is that you can get immediate help from somebody else. Hopefully that's in your group that does understand the material. Um, so you want to get help as soon as possible if you don't understand something. Um, so how can you get help in this class? Uh, so there are going to be learning assistants, six learning assistants that are going to help with this class. And those six students are students who have taken General Chemistry 1 with me. They're all extremely good students. They made really good grades in this class. They understand the material in depth. And so they're going to be available to help you in this class. Um, so I'll get their schedule out to you soon so that you can, if you need help, you can work with them. Uh, Anim Commerce also has a, what's called a jamp room. Um, they have tutors available in there for free that you can use. And I, once I know their schedule, I'll get that information to you. Uh, you can ask your Chem 101 instructor. Um, and the Chem 101 classes, you're basically going to be working problems in that class and those problems are going to be relevant to the type of problems you'll see on your exam. So if you can work those problems in Chem 101, there's no reason why you should not be able to work the problems on the test that I give you. And of course, you can always ask me questions. You can post questions to D2L, and I'll try to respond that way. That way everybody can see the question and answer. Um, so other things you can do to succeed in this class, you can work lots and lots of problems. It's not good enough to watch a video and think, oh, that made sense. Now you actually have to work a problem and see if you can set it up yourself and get the answer yourself. So the more problems you work in this class, the better off you're going to be. Um, if I'll be posting video lectures, so you know, watch those videos as many times as necessary in order for you to make sure you understand the concepts. So that's the upside to this being online. If it was face to face, I would give the lecture in class one time, and then. If the material's gone, except for how good of notes you have. With the material being online, if you don't understand something, you can go back and watch that video again. And there will be some concepts that are much more difficult than others, and you may have to watch the video several times in order to fully understand the concept. So if this was a face-to-face -face class, I would say have good attendance. Um, what does that mean in the online class? I guess that would mean watch these videos. As I post them, you watch them and make sure you understand them. And if you don't understand them, watch them again. If you still don't understand it, ask for help from somebody. Uh, so I would say if you're in class, pay attention. So don't play on your phone when you're in class. I would say the same thing if you're watching these online videos. Pay attention, right? Don't be playing. Don't be distracted by something else. Pay very close attention to those videos so that you can see the content that you're going to be expected to know and so that you can understand how to set those problems up and solve them. Uh, you want to take good care of your health, your mental and physical health. Um, I know for some of you this is your first semester in college. Obviously with the situation nowadays with uh, the pandemic, it's much harder for the social interaction, so there's less distractions now, but still uh, you want to be taking care of your mental and physical health um, so that you can succeed in this class. 
and I would say read your chapters. I'll be sending out sending out notes as well. Make sure you read through those notes and understand every single thing in the note. Because every single thing that I talk about in the video or that's in your notes is free game on a test. If I just spend five minutes on it, it's still free game. You may be tested over it. Uh, if, if I don't put it in a lecture, uh, one of these video lectures, but it's in your uh, textbook chapter, then that, that basically means I'm not going to put that on, on your test. Only the stuff that I put in the video lectures will you be expected to know. And I'll also be sending out some old exams, a semester's worth of old exams, so you can work through those before you take your test and make sure that you understand how to work all of those problems. And if you do all of these things, I cannot possibly see how you could not make a, a decent grade in this class. My goal is for every single one of you to at least make a C in this class, pass the class so that you can move on to your other courses. I know some of you, nothing less than an A is acceptable. Um, so if you want to make a good grade in the class, these are the things that you must do. So anyway, uh, uh, I hope you enjoy the class, learn a lot of chemistry, but it is important to recognize at the end of the semester, I'm going to assign you the grade that you earn, not the grade that you want to have. So whatever you earn, that's the grade you're gonna get. Um, but I genuinely want all of you to succeed, pass this class with an A, B, or a C. I would prefer everybody make an A because that means every one of you knows the material extremely well. Um, because, you know, this is not a watered down class. I'm gonna cover the exact same material in the video lectures that I would cover in a face-to-face -face lecture. And so I'm going to expect you to know all of the material just as well as, as you would know, be expected to know it if you were taking this class face-to-face. -face. Okay, anyway, so the next video, I'll get started with chapter one.